and now for something completely different. Um, Shamila didn't actually have a choice. She didn't volunteer for anything. We volunteered. I'm really sorry I have to rush off after this. I wanted to um, go back a little bit and give you an idea of the current reorganisation of the health service and how respect fits into that landscape, and certainly from our perspective in Kent, sorry, Sussex. Because we made a strategic decision um, that we would try for the implementation on an STP-wide basis, and were that not possible, on a kind of geography within the STP-wide basis. So those are three STPs I'll be talking about. Surrey Harkins, where the respect implementation has been successful, and that's almost 100% percent done to Yanni Hodgson there in the Royal Surrey County, a huge amount of work. Um, Sussex and East Surrey STP, where we're doing an end of life care improvement project across all of the arms length bodies involved in health and social care, of which my organisation, Health Education England, is just one, and Kent and Medway STP. Um, firstly, I wanted to say that respect for us, uh, we are using it as a uh, press the button on a refresh of education and training around end of life care across the entire uh, Kent, Surrey, Sussex and the end of life care pathway for our patients. Um, we felt very strongly that it was important to resource the implementation of respect and therefore we effectively deliberately held off until the structures of the STPs had embedded and we could see the shape of the organisations within an STP that we might need to bid for resources for our respect implementation. And essentially those structures are uh, the LWAB, which is the Local Workforce Action Board. Could I have hands for everybody who understands what the STP actually stands for or does? Okay, a bit hesitant, okay. Uh, the Sustainability and Transformation Partnerships at the bottom are just about wrapping all health and social, service, social care services around a particular geographical footprint. Um, and then those hands that were up, the LWABs are the Local Workforce Action Boards. There's less of an understanding. Okay. Um, then this really doesn't make much sense to you, so I'll go straight to. This is how the local workforce action boards are meant to operate. So they are to deal with the workforce implications of your services on the ground, of your needs on the ground, and in particular to look in the kind of five to ten year term at what your workforce will need to be to produce the kind of staffing and the kind of service that you will need to wrap around your particular geographical footprint. So any STP is looking via its LWAP to develop the workforce around its current and future needs. We've decided that respect is one element of a wider end-of-life care improvement project uh, across all of Kent, Surrey, Sussex, and that respect should be implemented both community and acute at the same time if we can achieve it. So what Health Education England has done is it's placed some resource within a hospice education collaborative for the early part of respect education and training. So our GPs, our community teams can come to their local hospice and say, we are hoping to align across the uh, respect implementation group for that particular STP. And um, once the decision about going live uh, has been decided per STP, the hospices will provide the community education and training around respect. Okay, so, the, sorry, this is the final two parts of what the LWABs do. Uh, and the LWABs, remember now, are not just a Health Education England support for the STP. All education and training budgets, um, it may surprise you that there would be pots of money in NHS England because a service redesign can sometimes require some education and training. There would have been a pot of money for X type of service development in NHS improvement targeted at some of these trusts that were struggling with CQC. There might be some money in public health. There might be some money in Health Education England. Essentially, the STPs offer us a way forward to rationalise some of the resource 
around particular pathways. And we're very hopeful that in Health Education England Kent, sorry, Sussex, we provide access to resources for teams to implement respect on a geography basis. I'll be describing my successes and failures uh, in the next five minutes. So the Workforce Transformation Plan and the leadership and support to allow patients and their carers to confidently make decisions and competently lead change across pathways. And respect is one of the changes that we're implementing. This very busy slide describes uh, an end-of-life care improvement pilot that we are testing currently in one footprint in one STP. That is Crawley, Horsham, Mid Sussex, East Surrey. Uh, and, sorry, that's it. That's our that's our initial footprint to scale up at the end of the year to the wider STP. And if successful, our solutions are acceptable to the other STPs that they would be encouraged also to uh, adopt our solutions. The respect process is only one element of this wider improvement work that we're trialling in this area. Um, I'll give you an example of one of the strands of work we're doing. We are currently who provide 24 hour care for people in their homes, in care homes, um, because as you know, if we do things right with end of life care, um, we could potentially save a lot of money, but more importantly, we provide a much better service for patients and their carers, because the majority of patients want to remain uh, where they feel comfortable. Um, and so, one of the strands of improvement is looking at broadening the spectrum of competencies within that 24-hour team that supports people in the community. These communities of practice or primary care hubs, the, the nomenclature is different wherever you go, and in different STPs it's called something different. But basically it's your out of hours, people thought of it as your out of hours team, but it's not, it's a whole 24 hour service in the community that currently is a multidisciplinary team that includes mental health and social work. Um, we're considering broadening that to include specialist palliative care provided by our hospice sector, all the way across the spectrum to also involving volunte volunteers. Um, because very often we find that some of the needs of are just for somebody who would give them a break, or some respite, or somebody who would walk the dog. So the whole spectrum, from the very most specialist palliative care, complicated presentations, all the way down to befriending or volunteering, um, we are amplifying the, the, that's one of the strands of the improvement work. Now, respect fits into this because we believe that we shouldn't just implement respect if we have an opportunity to also deliver other education improvements. And so what we did was, in Surrey Heartlands, we had no difficulty getting the respect, well, Yanni would say differently, but in terms of resourcing the plan that Yanni put together, the business case that Yanni put together, um, there was no real difficulty getting the resource because Surrey Heartlands is the most mature of the three STPs on my patch. It is so mature that this week it, had become, it becomes, it's just been officially approved and the documents are being signed for it to become a devolved uh, entity. Um, and that's like Greater Manchester. So that's a, as a result of assuring the Department of Health that it was that far advanced, it attracted tens of millions of pounds in transformation funding that the other STPs didn't attract. And therefore the respect implementation for Surrey Harkins got some transformation funding for the implementation. So this is the kind of, this is one tiny aspect of the business plan that Yanni put together for the Surrey Harkins STP. She's very kindly shared it widely in Kent, Surrey, Sussex, um, and I'm sure that if you were nice enough and approached her and asked her permission, she'd share the full business case with you as well. Um, but critically, one of the things we felt very strongly about was that the implementation of respect must attract dedicated staff and project support. It should not fall on just anybody else adding an extra responsibility to the day job because that's what's happening and that's what's happened and that's what's bedeviled healthcare innovation on the ground in the NHS. Frequently, the one champion or the one enthusiast 
takes on too much, possibly burns out, and then where are we? So we felt very strongly that we wanted a full implementation package with project support because we don't want just the acute trusts in patches to be the implementers. We want the entire pathway to be the implementer of respect, including community. So that's an example of a business case, and I want to really uh, thank from the bottom of my heart Caroline Sterling from London, who almost a year and a half ago, nearly two years ago now, shared some of the uh, projected savings for her particular part of London that allowed us to actually collect data on the ground for our CCGs um, on particular improvement projects. So as I said, one of the things Thank you very much, Caroline. She's there. <laughs> I didn't see you. I'm so pleased that you're here. Um, this has given us a real boost because we were able to go to our STPs and we were able to make the business case um, where we implemented in East Surrey an advanced care plan in care homes improvement project within six months. Uh, emergence, uh, uh, conveyance to emergency departments were down 50% and non-elective admissions were down 38%. So based on Caroline's projected savings, we were able to put actual data against savings in one of our um, footprint. And on that basis, we presented to the STP um, slides that you will have um, sent to you from this today. And please, I've been tweeting from the conference today, please follow me on Twitter and ask me direct questions about this business case, if you will. But we were able to show that with the trends in decrease admission, we could save enough money. And with these, the, the death in hospital trends are on the way down as well. But that the whole issue around uh, increasing discharges or speeding up discharges or stopping inappropriate admissions was going to give us sufficient savings for us to attract um, the kind of attention that STPs are, are, are about at the moment because they're all about savings. You really have to make the case that something you do is going to give you savings. Those are the ones for Kent, Surrey, Sussex. Um, we, we were unsuccessful in delivering this business case to the Sussex and East Surrey LWAB. Um, but, uh, and there was a very good reason we were unsuccessful, uh, there wasn't enough money. Um, but um, by clearly placing our end of life care work within the urgent and emergency care program, um, and also within the frailty context, and those are the two areas that uh, STPs are really paying attention to, we were approached immediately afterwards and asked if our respect implementation could be a pilot for the summary care records program that is uh, very well resourced and that overarches all of Kent Surrey Sussex. So there's a program of activity that each of the three STPs has contributed to which attempts to rationalise the 40 organisations across those three STPs and their summary care records. Now with the writable PDF for respect that it could be scanned and uploaded, we found that they will resource our respect implementation. And so my question at the moment is, and I'll be running away shortly, but I'd love if you'd give me some feedback, whether if I have this one opportunity for resource for respect implementation, I now just join Sussex and East Surrey STP, Kent and Medway STP, and have one team doing the implementation of respect across that much larger patch. Admittedly, each of the areas within those patches are at different stages of development, but the groundwork has been laid, and there's some great work being done, especially in Sussex and East Surrey, and I can see Steve Bass in the audience and Lauren, from Sussex Partnership and Brighton and Sussex, right, BSUH um, in our part. There's some great work being done on the ground. Sussex and East Surrey are ready to go. Kent and Medway less so. But I'm now faced with the question, since I have the one opportunity to get some resource against this respect implementation, do I just go for broke? Anyway. Thank you. That's it.